Greetings weary traveler, come, warm yourself by the fire, and let us regale you with mighty tales, tales of adventure, tales of heroism, and of course, tales of Tamriel. I am your host, Arkanir, barely alive, and right off the bat I have to say, this week may not be a family friendly show, for reasons we will explain throughout the show, um, but... Just so you know, this may be an explicit show, so parental... I forgot the word is advised. Guidance suggested. We'll do there our we best. Go. Thank you. Yes. Earmuffs, kids. Earmuffs. Yeah, we'll do our best. So, the voices you just heard, obviously, are awesome cast, starting with the man, the myth, the legend, Lotus of Doom himself. How's it going, Lotus? Uh, good. I think I'm the least rage-filled at the moment out of all of us. <laughs> yeah, probably, probably. Um, also joining us, Anger Queen herself, the master of Call of Duty Warzone, Hyper Pixie Gaming. How's it going, Pixie? Be better, but I'm here. Also returning us with his new microphone because his microphone broke. Yeah. Promethean, our resident Daedra worshipping Argonian. How's it going, Promethean? Finally. I'm great. <laughs> Happy to finally have all of my tech working again. <laughs> yeah, we are we are happy too. We are happy too. I know, finally the overlay yeah, makes back. sense. The and then it like all broke. <laughs> I was like, I was like oh, no. oh I was like, oh, Audacity's working, cool. And then my mic wasn't working, and I was like, neat. And then I came back and Audacity wasn't working, and I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> and then I just ordered everything and I was like, okay. Typical Tales fashion. Mm. Yep. God. Oh, I forgot to update the overlay. Nice. Nice, good. Well, that's yeah, that's this that's fine. I'm gonna you quit. sound so calm. Yeah. I am so tired to be anything but calm. I can't <laughs> I can't muster any other emotions at the moment. So, so wait, am I wait the only one making this podcast explicit then? No, just no, wait no, no. Till he I will get to my tails. Yeah, I will get wait. to my tails, don't worry. Ah, <laughs> oh, goodness me. So to explain why I'm uh toasted, I so <laughs> We started a new dungeon series um, with Luna, Kitsune, and Jen from uh, from our trials, right? We call ourselves the Untaunted, which was proven uh, by me losing Tanda all the time. Anyway, so I forgot our D&D sessions with Ophelia Noir, Ninja, k Pow, and Dawn Whisper and scheduled the dungeons right after that. Um, and that is... Like, just a few hours before tale, I record Tales of Tamriel. So it's like 10 hours of content within 12 hours. Uh, hence why I am a bit toasted. But we will get to all that with our tales. But before, I want to give a specific shout out to... Um, not It's not a Patreon or Twitch plug, but Rich Lambert had its birthday. Our creative director for Elder Scrolls Online... So shout out to Rich Lambert for surviving one more year um, on Earth <laughs> dealing and with all of us. <laughs> one more year of Elder Scrolls Online community of us. So every birthday, well, depending on when this show is recorded and goes live, it will be a different day, but you get the idea. Well, Rich is in Happy my time birthday, Rich. So it's yeah, technically Rich's birthday. birthday for 48 more minutes. So <laughs> <laughs> See, see, there we go. That works. Yep. Exactly. It was all planned. Exactly. Now, in terms of news, we don't have much, uh, so I'm quickly gonna let Lotus and Promethean talk about it, because it involves them, the console launch of Greymoor. So, yay, we got Greymoor! <laughs> yeah, we got Moore. Moore. <laughs> Yep, I was gonna say, that pretty much covers it, woo! Yep. So, I actually do have a question. I know that you had an interesting glitch lotus where your <laughs> character decided to just do a headstand through like 30 minutes of content yes but I believe the official title chat gave it was face grinding um there we go <laughs> perfect yeah 
So how smooth or not smooth was the console launch? Because I know PC launch was interesting. Uh, yes. Um, so to be fair, <laughs> that wasn't a yes or no um, question. <laughs> yeah, um, it was in, in, <laughs> in, in PlayStation terms, at least it was a yes or no question as in it did launch. <laughs> the it <end>. was there. <laughs> um, no, to, to be fair, uh, there have been some issues. It was nothing like what you all dealt with <laughs> on PC. Oh, so you didn't get free gray more. <laughs> <laughs> we did not get free gray more, but um, we've had a couple like goofier glitches for the most part. But um, my frame rate has actually been very smooth for the most part, which is kind of nice on uh, PlayStation. There have been some other weird things like that upside down <laughs> character glitch thing that mm -hmm. I had. Um, I'll get into the kind Vegas thing later. And, you know, so, some of the stuff like that is still in progress but i don't know um for anybody who doesn't realize should we mention the fact we we didn't have the show last week because of kind of all that's happening in the real world mm. and zoss also um took a day uh and delayed graymore on console from last tuesday to wednesday to kind of acknowledge the whole black lives matter movement with uh it was Floyd's funeral. So yep. they, they kind of just did like a nod to moving it one day later. And I don't know if that ended up also giving them the side effect of, Hey, stuff had just a little extra time just as a side effect of that or whatever. But the actual launch itself wasn't that big of a deal. It, it worked and none of the glitches have been that bad other than the hero storms being super off time i guess the, the, that's kind of a mess so. so the thing with hero storms uh do you mean by off time do you mean the respawn times and everything like that yes so they don't have a respawn time as far as yeah. i know so apparently how right. they work is it only respawns once an active hero storm is destroyed at a random location oh. so Someone has to go, let's say a Hero Storm spawned in, I don't know, Blackreach. I don't know if Blackreach and Western Skyrim are in the same rotation, but apparently, yeah, because we were waiting for long times for them to respawn, and apparently, so this was discussed in Zone Chat, um, no matter how long, it doesn't matter how long you wait, there can only be one active hero storm at a time, so people have to close one hero storm and then it will respawn at a random location. Okay. So, so if everybody is waiting sense. at a specific location, it will never respawn because the other one is never killed. Inter so that that makes sense to me. The only reason I mentioned there being a weirdness to it because. I saw several things popping up about it's being looked at. So mm -hmm. I, that was what made me think there was something wrong with it. But maybe they were just it, maybe it wasn't meant that there's something wrong. It's is this a system that like is bothering a lot of people or something like that? Maybe that's more of what they meant. And I interpreted it yeah. like, oh, there's something off because I mean, they're slow, but it's not. I don't know. I haven't had that big of a problem getting getting a hold of them as long as I keep running mm -hmm. around and stuff. So I know that I don't think that there's a set rotation because when I was this part of my, I spent like 20 minutes waiting for one because I was I've just been questing in like one spot. But Zone Chat was saying that there's no rotation between all what 10 of them. It's just it's random between like Western Skyrim and Blackreach. There's yeah. no like set order or literally anything to it. It just Ye one will happen. Which I could also see, especially if what you're saying is true, where it's like, okay, only one can be up at a time, because we've seen the same one pop up several times before others have popped up. Like, because oh. you, in the middle of Skyrim, you can kind of see three of them mm -hmm. from the middle, and I we've had the one in the middle pop up multiple times before either of the other two have. But if it's doing it random, just based on as long as one's eliminated, that would actually make sense still. Like, okay, well, you cleared it another one. It just happened to randomly choose middle again instead of southern or something like that. Yeah. 
as opposed to mm-hmm. doing like a, a rotate. So interesting. That's huh. I mean, I don't, I don't like the idea of one having to be killed in because order to trigger another. There is no map another. indicator. Like at least make it like the dragons. Right. So y- people know which one is active, so they ride there and they kill it. Mm-hmm. You know, that would that would be my solution to it at least. Like if they are not going to respawn like dolmens, that would be a solution to handle that. Yeah. They're on par with like I would say like the dragon level of difficulty. Like they're a definitely. Beast. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Like to not Yeah, the have, kill counters like, are getting high in some of those <laughs> fights. <laughs> there were like three people at the one I did and it took us like five minutes. Mm-hmm. I was like, this is a beast. So to not mm-hmm. have like the entire map running to one of them seems insane to me. Right. Especially because oh man, if you don't keep the ghosts from sacrificing themselves onto the pikes. Oh my god. We've shown up to a couple late. Like, oh, this one's up. Maybe we can get there in time. And it's like three people doing it. But they've obviously been doing it for a while because there's like 14 super beasts up. I was like, what have you people been doing (laughs) other than just collecting more bosses? So then we have to like chisel through all those then try to take down the pikes. Well, if you take too long to get through the other pikes too, the the pikes you've already killed will come back up. And I found that out. Oh. Yes. It's not a good time. Oh my god. I didn't know that was a thing. I died like 20 times to one hero storm because... It was just some randoms who were standing around and we were all attacking like different pikes. And so we'd get one pike to go down and then we'd move on to the next pike. And by the time we got the next pike, like halfway down, the other pike came back up. And then we had all of these werewolves on us (laughs) and it was just a nightmare. And I had to beg people to come in and help. (laughs) That's, oh, that's good to know because sometimes I've shown up and been like, how have they done zero damage to the pikes? Like, <laughs> like just from the amount of time it took me to get here, you could have done damage to something. Makes me wonder if, like, maybe they did take one down, but it came back then in that case. Oh, interesting I know and horrifying. I I was in a group, or I, I, I kind of ran into a group who was taking out the northernmost pike in Western Skyrim, just north of Solitude. Mm-hmm. And we would get a pike down, and I swear... We had to take down the same pike like seven times before oh, wow. we actually had enough Oof. people to finish. It was a good 15 minutes before the hero storm actually died. Yikes. It was a long fight. It might actually be more difficult to solo than dragons, though. Oh, God. Yes. With yeah, a respawning mechanic that. and a constantly least... spawning bosses. Mm-hmm. Right, yeah. At least the yeah. dragons, like... Unless everyone at the dragon dies, the dragon steadily goes down. It doesn't just yeah. keep healing yeah. itself. I like them. I think they're sweet. I, oh, I'm yeah, a it's huge fun fan to of these hero storms. Yeah. They're so great. I like the difficulty level. It yeah. is difficult whenever like, it's just a couple of you at it and you can't convince people from zone chat to come in with you. But as far as the difficulty level overall, I really do enjoy them. And they look amazing. Yeah. Oh yeah, it looks really. Cool. Feel- but as as SD in chat also said, prime time Europe takes two mm-hmm. minutes. Like fifty people are there. People just cast one AOE and the entire thing blows up. Yeah, that's it. that's what I, when you uh, that's one of the things about world of <laughs> you throw enough <laughs> bodies at it and it's like I don't care how hard this is, if it's not resetting, you can just yeah. you can yeah. just overwhelm yeah. it with numbers. You just I mean, wear out their kill counters on our face. <laughs> In terms of, like, a public event or, or, like, world event, I think that, like, that's where the difficulty should be. Yeah. Like, it should be. Oh, yeah. You need people to do it. Like, that's the point. I think... I, and... I always thought a scaling world event would be more fun, though. Like, mm-hmm. instead of 100 people nuking down a dragon in 10 seconds, right. uh, the event should scale with the amount of people participating. And so if there's 100 people... Maybe it shouldn't get like a hundred percent more difficult, but like a fifty, at least a fifty percent more difficult, so yeah. it doesn't get instantly nuked out of the sky, or in the case of hero storms, instantly just blown into into Molag Ball's realm, you know. So, well, I mean, wasn't Abyssal that? Geyser? I was gonna say the geysers, yeah. Yeah. Are they scaling? Scale. Oh, mm-hmm. they, they are, but 
Yeah, they, they scale, but there's no scale. Like, the difficulty they scale to is still pretty low, is the problem. Yeah. Where I think with dragons and harrow storms, they're trying to raise the difficulty. Mm. Those scaled, but they were kind of like, okay, there's more stuff, but none of the stuff is meant to beat the crap out of you the same way the new ones are. Yeah. Well, I already moved us on to Tales of Tamriel sneakily in the overlay. Perfect. Um, <laughs> yeah, because we, <laughs> we're all talking about news. Oh, we're moving um, quick. Yep. Well, well, we all have I mean, this tales, is almost though. blending into Tales. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, um, Promethean, you've been away for a while. Why don't you start us with, the, with what you've been up to in places? Absolutely. <laughs> um... I was waiting for Greymore to come out. Uh, I took like a long break, so that way when I got into Greymore, I didn't like immediately have burnout. So I started the story, which is cool. That's what I'm gonna leave it at. I really enjoy it. Mm -hmm. um, I also started Antiquities, which I did like one, and then I got irritated because you can so you can do them multiple times, which I found out, which I did not know. Probably like there's three different little blurbs of text you can get yeah and for whatever reason i couldn't get it to pop another like a second or third time every time i would do it like i did the one in western skyrim and it wouldn't i couldn't get the other two to come up i would like leave the little antiquity site and try and like scry it again and it would like pop up and then when i went back to the site it was like this is not a valid antiquity site you can't use your eye and i was like i don't understand what's going on so i just kind of left it and so I have a couple leads right now that I just I'm not high enough level to do. And so we're just I'll get there when I get there is kind of where I'm at um, on that. So I wonder if it's uh, a known bug because I, I don't, don't know if it's a go ahead. Sorry, I don't I don't I never heard of it. I know you can do the green ones like the ones they it gives you for every zone mm -hmm. infinitely. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. So that's, that's what how I, was trying I to do. farmed. Yeah, it could also be that I'm just dumb because that <laughs> happens a lot. <laughs> I'm like, I really just don't know what I'm doing. Honestly, um, the the user experience on on antiquities is kind of lacking in terms of explaining how it all worked. Like they do explain, you know, the scrying and digging out how it works, but where you get the leads, the I mean. That the fact that the leads expire, how it works, also, what can you get from leads, things like that. It's kind of lacking in terms of presenting the mm -hmm. information to the player at the moment. I kind of had an issue with the tutorial, honestly. Be I mean, like, so the scrying part was fine, like that. I felt like it. Honestly, I felt like neither of the tutorials explained it the way that I was getting the like the vibe from the quest, essentially. Mm. Um, like I came out of doing the like the dig and I was like, I have no idea what I just did or how I uncovered <laughs> that artifact. <laughs> and then I went to go do another one and I was like, I still have no idea what I'm doing. So I didn't feel like it was really straightforward enough for me to just mm -hmm. figure out, which I kind of would have liked. Like, it, I don't know. But all that aside, I, just, I haven't done them anymore because... So to your point on that, um, as I did... My first intro was on stream, so people saw my expression when I first did, did an antiquity and they explained it to me was a blank stare at the screen. <laughs> yeah. And I was like, <laughs> what? <laughs> yeah. Um, I had literally no idea what the hell they were talking about. And I botched around in one for a while, and a couple people, um, uh, I, Isha and uh, Mr. Crowley and some other people were trying to be like, give me hints without just like backseat gaming for me, but just kind of like, okay, you're kind of looking for this. It's not explained super in detail, but this is what yeah. they mean. And I was nothing, nothing. I finish it and I'm like, okay, I go into the next one and I don't know why, but it just clicked. All of a sudden I was like, oh wait, I totally get this. And now I just rifle yeah. through them and I've done an, <laughs> a, a horrifying amount of them, which I'll get yeah. to later. But yeah, so so I don't know if there's just a point where it clicks because at first I was like, huh, <laughs> I see. <laughs> I, I feel like it's definitely not the mini game in my mind that was advertised with it. 
like it's far more challenging for me than I thought it was going to be. I don't know why. Maybe puzzles just are not <laughs> my thing. <laughs> like maybe antiquities are not for me. And that's all I'm finding out. I really um, enjoy scrying and I'm better. I mean, I have yet to completely destroy a thing. But scrying for me, I really enjoy that. Yeah. I, hopefully it'll grow on me. If not, you I, get it's used to fine. It. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, it's not it's it's not something that I'm going to just never do. Yeah. I, I can't figure it. Like, I'll figure it. I will bust my way through that wall. If, yeah, <laughs> like, I'll do it. <laughs> um, other than antiquity, like, that stuff, on a very, like, different, subtle note, they have come a huge way with their character animations when you are talking to someone. Like, I was just oh. talking to someone and watching their hair move, and, like, I had no idea what they were saying to me, and I was like, wow. <laughs> I was like, I feel like I'm actually here. So that, I just, I thought that was amazing. Um, I hadn't paid attention was... to it. Now I have to log in. Yeah, and, it's And actually talk it's to crazy. people. Yeah, it's really weird, and I was not expecting it, and I'm really happy about it. Um, my, I have the sad heroes, the one hero storm I did, cause I really got irritated, spent, like I said, like five minutes doing it, maybe more. I really don't, I think there were really just two of us there and it was the time, um, we killed the boss and I accidentally hit square instead of like X, which square takes you to a way shrine. And oh. by the time I got Aww. back, the boss was gone. I lost my loot and the hero storm didn't count. And I had spent maybe 20 to 25 minutes waiting for the hero oh. storm. Oh. And I was like, well, oh, no. I was like, okay. I was like, I guess I'm just going to go quest some more. <laughs> Ouch. I, like, I just expected that the boss would still be there with my loot because I killed it, but it was not. And I was like, well, Neat. Well, on, actually, you right. don't loot the bosses in Hero Storm. It's so it's, it's like a grave thing that you loot. It's like a oh. mound of dirt. Yeah, the reliquary breaks and shatters, and all the ash pours into the middle where it was hovering. Yeah. So there was because it would have turned yellow, and there was. Oh uh, yeah. Nothing. Actually, no. It doesn't. Actually, turn they yellow don't. Either. Yeah. They don't you mark for some reason. reason. Yeah. Once again, here is <laughs> yeah. where we come into me being a dumb. Player. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I just kind of rummage around on the pile mm. of, I assume, cremated people until I can loot them. <laughs> huh. I mean, again, it's it's bad use, bad design though. In terms of like, for right. six years you play the game, you kill a thing, and it shines. And the loot right shines, and it's interactable, and you see the outline, or it's a chest, and that okay. shines. It's and suddenly with Hero Storms, they were like, hey, no, it's in the right in the middle, but we are not going to indicate that you can loot this thing. So, mm. plus, I've For done me. multiple Hero Storms and nothing good dropped. So don't worry about it, I'd say. I was hoping for well, some furnishing so stuff and whatnot. It wasn't the case. I think you need to loot it in order for it to complete. Oh. Which it didn't. So I don't have that hero storm completed, even though I've done it. <laughs> so it definitely yeah, didn't that's... drop anything in that case for you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, it was a time. <laughs> well, for me, the issue with looting them isn't that I didn't know to loot in the middle. It was the fact that all these sorks had their pets out. And so, oh. like, wouldn't let me loot the thing until yeah. I went into first person and forced it to loot it. And then I also got zapped by lightning a couple times, so I have to yell at the thing before I actually get to loot it. I don't think the yelling actually helps, it just helps my soul, and <laughs> yeah. then I'm able to loot. Um, and this was all, like, literally one day. I played on, like, launch day and all of this happened. Um, went to do the Bard's College questline, because that is in there, and my screen just went black, and I couldn't do anything. Okay. I, like, okay, I guess the game is literally just telling me to stop playing. <laughs> I mean, and apparently, your experience scratch. has been largely different than mine. <laughs> yeah, right, I so I haven't gone into the, any, like, trials or had any of the bugs that you guys have experienced, but <laughs> man, did this game throw me through the ringer <laughs> on Wednesday. <laughs> and so I have slightly taken a break um, because I have wanted to cry multiple times. <laughs> oh, no! Um on a 
positive note, my collector's edition came. You can kind of see the statue behind me. Um, oh, yeah. There it is. I, I see yeah. it. Yeah. Ugly vampire. Oh, I hate I think him. It looks cool. I ordered yeah, it by I, I absolutely like hate him. <laughs> I, Send it to me. Got I will take him. Notice. I got my nice shipping notice for the reliquary. Um, and then they announced the lithograph, and it's taking my whole soul to not hit order on it <laughs> because I have that <laughs> and the other Skyrim one. So we'll see. Uh, I'm sure there will be a nice tweet that says I bought it in the next couple days. So. <laughs> <laughs> All the money in the ESO. It's not a bad way to spend your money. No, I know. There's definitely worse ways. Um, like college textbooks. Who needs those? <laughs> yeah. It's true. When it's I much more them. expensive. You can do the entire college with no textbooks. Don't I, buy them. They're a scam. Just I could just have <laughs> nice lithographs hanging on my wall. Yeah. That's way exactly. more worth it. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> um, yeah, but that's that's all I've done without like any spoilers in the because yeah. that's I don't want to ruin it for anybody. I guess we'll hold off on spoiler episode until at least the next DLC is announced. Like if it, it even if it's not released, it's we'll, we'll wait yeah, until we talk about announced. the dungeon pack or something. Yeah. 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 All right, Pixie. What have you done in Call of Duty this week? <laughs> oh my god, I died a whole lot. That's what I did. So, just to give a little bit of background, I went through this whole thing. So, my boyfriend is on Mac. He does not have a PC. I'm the one with the PC. And he, like myself, was a console gamer forever. But then he played a shooter on computer with me. And he's like, wow, mouse and keyboard is so much better. I want to play Call of Duty, which is his game, on an iMac. So I'm like, oh, I'll get it on my PC and we can play together. So this is this whole day ordeal of trying to get his drivers working on his boot camp Mac to try to play Call of Duty, and I'm like, oh, I'll play COD 2, which was a big mistake, because apparently it just makes me very angry whenever I play that game, because I'm really, really bad at it, and people just shoot me as soon as I spawn, and then I just yell things, <laughs> and I'm trying not to say all the expletives I did, because I finally calmed down, and I finally found my zen again, but my <laughs> god, it's bad, and I was bad at everything in the world, and that is why I don't play Call of Duty very much, because it makes my heart rate and blood pressure go through the freaking roof. <laughs> <laughs> and now into Vet Kinds Aegis. Yes. <laughs> now for a nice casual transition to something else that probably is awful. <laughs> okay, so I, I have to start out by saying like the aesthetics of the dungeon are really, really cool, and I really do appreciate those. The whole wave mechanic that a lot of the mobs do is cool, but my god, I do not have enough stamina to deal with those. I have to remember to re consciously remind myself to block instead of roll dodge, even though codes says roll dodge. I just don't have enough stamina. Aha, your Ex add-ons are biting you in the ass this time. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and so the big thing is... So for most of them, I can dodge roll and I'm just fine because there's only one of the wave jerks. Yeah. I can't remember their names right now. Yeah, the ones or with the great swords they have. Tidebreakers, tide that's there it. Yeah, yeah. They're just jerks. <laughs> so there's a point like partway through the dungeon where there's two of them at the same time. And they like to like stagger their attacks like one right after the other. So you don't have time to like let your stamina regenerate. And I'm a magicka based healer. I don't even do tripods. I do not have stamina except for very limited use to like roll dodge out of a thing and then have time to recuperate before the next thing. So with back to back stuff, I just get obliterated. But my co-healer keeps telling us, you know, guys, if you just block, you have enough stamina to absorb the next thing as well, or at least dodge roll out of the way of the second one. So I have to remember to do that, but every single time my brain just says, screen says dodge, you should dodge now, mm -hmm. and that's what I do. <laughs> so I either need to just 
ignore what it's telling me on the screen or just get good. I don't know. Maybe both. <laughs> Maybe both. <laughs> but so then I get to this is all with the Lore Seekers trial team, by the way. So they know what I'm talking about. They know my struggle. We get to the boat boss. I don't know what his name is, but boat boss, because there's a boat mechanic involved. I have not gotten past the boat boss, so I don't know what boss is next. But the last time we did the boat boss, so the first time we had just, it was too much time on the first boss with the pets. So we just didn't have enough time to wrap up the trial and like learn the mechanics. We were going in blind the first time. There were a couple of us who actually did know the mechanics that so they had done it before, but the majority of us had never done it. On vet especially. So we get to this boat boss the last time we did it, so last Sunday. And a little while into the fight, we notice all we can hear are footsteps and sword noises. Which apparently is all it takes to completely make me fall apart and forget how to heal. <laughs> and I think other people were struggling as well. Because it just felt all kinds of bad once the sounds went away. And I understand that I still have add-ons telling me to do things like right in my face but when i can't hear things i just got super i, I almost felt self-conscious like it was very <laughs> odd i felt the need to just start having small talk <laughs> in place of the sounds of the game just because the silence became uncomfortable and it was just for a while there was also grunting involved so it was just footsteps swords and grunting which made nice. it even more weird then the <laughs> grunting disappeared also and it was just silence, swords, and feet. And it was very <laughs> odd. <laughs> it sounds like it would be kind of relaxing and like it would help us focus more, but it was completely the opposite effect because everyone is like, this is just disturbing. <laughs> <laughs> so the needless to say, we didn't get past that. <laughs> exactly. That's what it sounded like. Because there were just, there were 24 sets of, pe uh, pe <laughs> of feet. Plus the bosses and the bosses' friends' feet, just dancing around out there, and then some swords, <laughs> and that was it. There wasn't even any yelling after a certain point, and it just didn't even feel like a battle. It was just like, what is this odd muffled sound coming from my headset right now? So we didn't get any further than we did the previous week, but I'm hoping. So I know this Sunday we're doing VSS. But the next Sunday I think we're going back into. VKA, which apparently that's Father's Day, so I probably won't be able to participate then, so they better not beat it without me. Hopefully they'll just do VSS again. Even mm -hmm. though I wish them all the best if they do try to do VKA again. But, um, so, in, in less... Actually, no, this news is kind of frustrating, too. It's just a, it's been a night for me, guys. <laughs> <laughs> so I did finish the man, main story, and I'm not going to give spoilers here. So overall, I immensely enjoyed the story. I thought it was incredibly well written. There were things that I didn't expect or see coming that I just really thought were awesome. I loved the entire thing. The characters were awesome throughout. We saw a lot of great character development. And I know this is all incredibly vague, but you should definitely play it for yourself. It's incredible. That being said, one of the last quests decided to bug out on me. And it was like, talk to your partners. And I, no, it was listen to your group. And I did. And then they went out a door. And I tried to go out the door after them because that's logically the next step that you would do. But it wouldn't let me. And it just said, listen to your partners. It's like, well, my partners dished me. <laughs> so how do you want me to actually listen to them? Please let me go out this door. And so then. I was like, okay, let me go into the door I came out of and back out and see if it resets itself. And it did. I was like, okay, sweet. It'll definitely work this time. No. It just did the exact same thing again, only I had to listen to the dialogue again. And so then after rage quitting and then scouring forums and posts, I saw something that Jess said where you essentially... So if you get stuck towards the end of the main quest, what you do is you let the instance reset itself. So you fast travel out... And you wait like 15 minutes. You don't have to abandon the quest, but I did. Just because I was just ready to nuke the thing. And then you run. No, actually, I did not abandon the quest. That was going to be my next step. It is a very long quest. 
So you just run all the way back through the tower and then you're good to go. At least that's how it worked out for me. After like, no, it said 15 minutes. I waited a whole night because I rage quit in the middle of the night. But hmm. it worked the out. The theme of the episode, rage quitting. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> That being said, okay, so I do want to come out and clarify that after launch, it's been remarkably smooth outside of that Kynes Aegis and the main story glitch. I haven't had any issues other than those two. I did a whole bunch of hero storms with Kiz and AKB from UASP last night, along with Labyrinthian again a couple of times. Went flawless. World bosses, awesome. I don't have any real complaints except for the main quest bug and the weird soundless bug. So all of this that sounds like a whole bunch of complaining is just a whole lot of noise because I'm mad at Call of Duty. (laughs) (laughs) But really though, the the, again, it's not the spoiler cast, so I can't get into specifics. I loved the story so much. And I've started doing a lot of the side quests because I am trying to get, I have the money for Proud Spire Manor, but I don't have the achievement yet. And I'm buying it with gold instead of crowns. So I'm going through some of the side quests. And something that I did find is that some of the side quests actually kind of play off of each other. So they don't inherently link, like it's not one side quest starts right after another, but you see characters from one side quest that are talking about characters from another one and they have artifacts from another character and that was super cool that continuity it would work regardless of which uh order you do them in and it was really neat to see two side quests in kind of the same area relate to each other like that and i was really really impressed so i want to do more side quests in the coming week to see how much more is like that because the writing was Really, really great in the couple of like longer side quests I've done. So I, I these were in Morthal area and they were awesome. And I'm so excited to do more of them because those were just fantastic. Very well written, took you to really cool places that were just visually stunning, which has been kind of the whole theme of the expansion for me is I just keep finding myself stopping and taking screenshots of these areas because my goodness, they are just breathtakingly beautiful in a way that I really haven't felt since Skyrim because I was able to isolate myself in first person in a single player instance. But in Western Skyrim, it takes that, but then cranks it up with today's graphics and high elves that don't look weird. So it was just it was just really that fantastic. layer of dirt that's on everybody in Skyrim. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, like, if you take out the character models that are questionable, it was that beauty again that I had been missing. And the game, of course, is gorgeous all over the place, but this zone, and I feel like I said this would elsewhere launch too, but this zone just feels so alive. And it feels so familiar because it is Western Skyrim, and that was my favorite part of Skyrim back whenever I was mainly in test five it's just really awesome and i love it so much and I yeah spent, that's my ideals i spent a good chunk of time literally just staring at the statue of meridia on mount kilgreath yes because i also i need to go back and literally just sit there for like i don't know how long the days reset but i have a picture or a screenshot of where the sun is almost in her hands and it looks like her beacon <laughs> Oh, yes. I want to just get it perfect because that's a really cool shot to get. So, but yeah, I, it's stunning. I saw somebody get that shot. I forget who it was on Twitter, but it was so beautiful yeah. and it was so clever. And I was really impressed with that yeah. kind of patience because I did not have that kind of patience. I just happened along at like the right time. And I was like, I really want to keep doing the main quest. So I'm just going to go and... Uh, hmm. But so I passed on it, but I have to go back. All right, I was AFK for a second, so I don't know what happened just now. What? <laughs> I'm all done. That's okay, yep, she just finished up. That, that, was the, that was the finale. <laughs> that that was all. Woo, pretty pictures. Yep. <laughs> Very pretty art. <laughs> all right, Lotus. All right. Um... I have a bunch of stuff listed, but most of it's actually pretty short. Um, I have played a lot of Greymore 
since its launch, um, I had that really ridiculous glitch that was mentioned. And for anybody in the live show, since I have cool executive powers and you want to see it, <laughs> uh, I am putting it in chat. It was clipped by Ark himself. There were several clips of it, actually. Yeah. Kiz has one. There, there were a bunch. So appreciate everybody clipping the ridiculous error that I got. Um, if for whatever reason I, you survive a one-shot mechanic from a boss and you don't die and you end up upside down, uh, just a little word of advice, nothing will fix it. You'll be allowed to glide around and all sorts, pick up items and everything. And uh, You need to fast travel. <laughs> That's the only <laughs> way to correct it. So it's not even a big thing, but it was, uh, it was very entertaining. I think I glided around on my character's head for about 20 minutes because yeah. nobody wanted me to stop <laughs> <laughs> i actually um, really wanted you to do the bucket splash and you ignored I me in chat several I times <laughs> i know i didn't and then all of a sudden i faster i was like wait i have like three messages from arc which are being highlighted how am i not seeing these <laughs> like i was tagging him i was highlighting the messages i was like do the bucket splash because while he was upside down, the emotes that had props, like the banner holding the Alliance banner and whatnot, it would actually bring out the prop and do the animation, but just upside down and in a broken way. <laughs> and I just wanted to have an upside down bucket splash Bucket emote. splash. I know. I botched it. My goal in life is to recreate that glitch so I can bucket splash. Bless you. He just uh, <laughs> he he kept reading comments like I in don't know chat how above mine so and below mine, but not mine. It, so you know how you say you miss heavy attack symbols? I feel like somehow you were my heavy attack symbol in chat that day. You I, like, I have a theory. So the first time I ever made brownies. I skipped the first step, which is also in bold. And apparently, I just don't read things in bold. And I feel like you might have the same <laughs> issue lips. Which is spray know. the pan. We had to chisel the brownies off the pan, which was not a fun time because they were also burnt. Because apparently, I didn't read that right either. <laughs> <laughs> the, the temperature was also bolded in that cookbook. There's <laughs> <laughs> a good chance. Amazing. <laughs> um. So yeah, that was pretty entertaining. Uh, one of the things that I was I had mentioned I was trying to do before the launch of Greymore was to hit 36,000 achievement points before it launched, and um, I managed to do that. I believe it was the Sunday right before Greymore launch. I hit 36K, which was really sweet. Um, I was pretty much just chiseling through random... Um, Dungeon achievements that I didn't have, like no deaths or speed runs and stuff like that. Um, one of the ones that I did do, which surprisingly we did with a very minimal problem, and we expected it to not be quite this simple, uh, we got the speed run, no death, hard mode, and fang layer, in, all three of them on our third try uh, in a total time of like between all three tries, I think we did it in an hour and 42 minutes of practice. Oh my god. Okay, just uh, to clarify. Congratulations. Just to clarify. Wow. Speed it was, run. Speed and run then... and no death were together. Okay. Hard mode, we okay. ended up doing... We had three We had three deaths on the hard mode. That was the reason we didn't get mm -hmm. the three at once. And one of them that drove me completely insane was two of us died from the ghost wall that did not hit us <laughs> and it was infuriating uh i actually have it i i wasn't streaming but i have it saved on my uh playstation like hard drive the ghost wall is like seven feet away from me <laughs> and i'm in this huge double side gap and i'm like perfect i'm here and the ghost goes by and after the ghost hits the back wall, I start going into position to re-grab Throverkin, and my character turns to dust and falls over dead. And I'm like, what the... Th and it's like, you died to ghost wall, 89,000 damage. I'm like, the ghost wall mechanic is behind me. It's over. Like, what just happened? So, yeah. Li little weird. Um, Zost but yeah, happened. Uh, what <laughs> but in the grand scheme of things, um, it, sans, sans that, it, it was just like... 
I was surprised how that well that went. Um, and as a side effect of that, you get the uh, n- what is it, necromancer personality or whatever yeah, it is, worm wizard. Worm wizard. Yeah. So the emotes are real cool. Like I love that you can take like the skull and. However, what I will say is please don't use that personality. You look like a horrible, horrible person who would drive a white van with candy spray painted on the side of it. (laughs) Um, It is so creepy how your character stands. It is like uncomfortable. (laughs) And if you take your mask off, you have this really uncomfortable smile. I'm like, nope, nope, (laughs) none of this. (laughs) so yeah um nope uh not not a not a fan of that was a fan of the skull thing though so uh yeah that was uh that was a great great run uh shout out to big bill will and uh neo nato who i know for a fact listens to the podcast so uh it was a a solid set of runs we got that done and um what was i gonna say so that was like one of the final ones i hit for my 36k which i was very excited about um uh prior to this i had been playing a ton of pvp and shout out to the ebonheart pact as we won gray host since the last show and wow when you're posted in the top 100 in a campaign for a 30 day you get a lot of rewards especially (laughs) when you win i got like 50k gold I think 15 purple jewelry pieces from varying sets, a whole bunch of purple whatevers that I don't care about um, that were just vendor trash. Um, f- 130 transmute crystals nice. <laughs> uh, in varying geodes. I was like, oh my God. Like, <laughs> <laughs> so I had never placed top 100 in a 30 day. Uh, so, and, and one, I guess I should stipulate. So, Lots of gifts, uh, which was very cool. I was got to transmute all of my perfected YOLO pieces, so they're all correct mm-hmm. now, which is kind of nice. <laughs> Let's see. A couple... All right, so... Now to the Greymore bits, I guess. <laughs> the giant camps, which feel super Skyrim to me, where they're just giant yeah. camps. I love those. Uh, they're really easy to clear. It's just a couple giants and they're, they're mammoths. And you can go in and you can kill them. And we notice you don't get the clear. Like, it doesn't clear the map section when, when you just wipe them out. You have to go and steal their mammoth cheese. <laughs> <laughs> and when you do, you eat it. And your character does some type of animation, usual projectile vomiting. Um, mm-hmm. And you get a new status effect called Enlarged by Cheese. And it doubles the size of your character. <laughs> oh my god, how did I not know this? I didn't do that. My big character Nord. didn't do that. Really? It's big Nord oh, time. Yeah, it's no. Big Nord on command, yes. Um, it lasts for, I don't know, like 15 seconds or something like that. It is hilarious. Uh, if you get on your mount, it makes your mount bigger too, because you have to fit on it. So... It yeah, and if you go in the status effect, I believe Alara from the UESP podcast was the first one I saw, and I didn't know what it referenced. She said best status effect uh, in gaming history, and it was just enlarged by cheese, <laughs> and I didn't know what it related to, and that's what it relates to. So wait, that's amazing. do you do you have to eat it right away the cheese, or can you? Yeah, so it's in. So you know how they have those like mammoth. Uh, baskets, like yeah. the baskets with the mammoth. So you have to actually go over and dig it out of it, and your character jams it in his face. Oh. And then you'll like throw up, and your character goes like whoop, and gets like really big all of a sudden when you do it. I, I wish we could, I don't know, make like have it as an item and use it whenever we want, like a memento, I guess. Ah, oh, now I'm sad, but I'll have to. Um, yeah, so that's that's how you clear those camps. If you were curious, because killing them doesn't work, that's what you, that's what you do. I don't know if you have to kill. I, we always kill everything first, then yeah. you get the cheese. <laughs> you don't have to kill them because there were like okay. Three times, and I was like, you I can just like kill swipe them. You the, just cheese. Steal the cheese. Yeah, <laughs> okay. But yeah, those those I love, and those feel super super Skyrimy to me. Um, the other thing is the Midnight Barrow 
uh, it's it's a delve. Seems like a very cool delve. However, uh, the group of us, we, we've been kind of just running around as a group questing and doing stuff. Not really so much questing, but like clearing areas. And we started that quest because a lot of the times you just do it in sync. It's easier. And don't do that as part of a group at all. It will glitch out real bad. Um Ooh. Because you have to pick up these artifacts and it will prote- it will tell you the story, which I'm not even going to go into it because the story seemed interesting. No idea what it is. Had to abandon the quest. Um, <laughs> because we went over and we each tried to interact with it thinking it would trigger our story. And it registered every one of us picking up the artifacts. So it was like, congratulations, you did one, two, three, four. Okay, the quest is done. And we're like, wait, we didn't get any of the story. <laughs> oh, so- no. So it just bypassed thinking we had picked up each of the four of them to do the story. And it just skipped all of the video. <laughs> so we got no story instead. Um, so don't do it in a group. And then the side effect of that delve, which we saw, I believe it was like on Reddit and stuff like that. A decent supply of the droggers in there are not interactable. So they will just chase you around, shooting you with arrows in the back of the head but they're not interactable enemies, so you can't fight them. It's just they, really frustrating. It's really annoying. Um, so you basically have to leash them in order to get around. So I really want to do Midnight Barrow, but that one does seem kind of glitched out, so I would suggest avoiding it for the time being because uh, it does not seem like it's doing so hot. Although it's kind of lame because I'm very curious on that story. Um, So on the note of story, Mm. this is an example of what not to do in game. (laughs) Someone, I'm guessing who is just mad at life, um, yelled out what seemed to be the entire end of Greymore in zone chat to apparently just spoil it for everybody. And since Pixie has already finished the story, I confirmed with her. I was like, so does this happen? And apparently it very much is what happens. So whoever that person was, um, you're a douche and is super lame that he probably ruined it for a bunch of people. I'm not too broken up about it. It is what it is, but a lot of people get really invested in the story. So that's, Really lame that somebody would do that. Um, don't ruin people's fun for other people by spoiling things. So that's a, that's a yikes. That's a big yikes um, that that happened. But I guess I'm ready for the spoiler cast now since I <laughs> know the end of the story, even though I haven't done anything past the prologue. <laughs> Honestly, <laughs> that, should be, that should be a bannable offense. I, like, people I agree should get There's banned not, for this. Yes, I'm not super ban heavy. I'm like, ah, there's always interpretations and stuff like that. You're just being a jackass if you do that. Like, there's no other scenario. <clears throat> so... The fact that somebody would do that, you're just trying to passively ruin the fun for other people yeah. because it's indiscriminate. It's literally just how many people can I make also have a bad day because I'm a sad person. It's like, okay, well, that's lame. So hopefully not a lot of people other than myself saw that in zone chat at the time or whatever. But yeah, that was that was unfortunate. Mm-hmm. So I think I'm going to chill on the main story for a bit and when we do our spoiler cast that's fine because i already know the end <laughs> but uh yeah that makes me kind of want to just hang out and do other stuff <clears throat> lots of antiquities i love antiquities i mean i chimed in to what promethean had mentioned earlier where i didn't get it at first now i'm obsessed with it i think i actually have almost every single achievement in it uh, besides being max level because uh, i i can't stop i i have a problem um <laughs> Yeah, I, I you do. You, it's, you do. Have it's a very much exactly what I wanted um, as like a chill thing. So I have done a lot of antiquities, to say the least. It's a great money making thing. Um. So. Yeah. Oh, I was gonna just say on the topic of the spoiler you got, I will yes. say that it's very much about the ride That's... to get to the end. So luckily even you that's know. yeah, that's something that they always do. The story is good. It's not like 
the whole thing relates to the twist, so to speak. So I'm sure I'll still enjoy it fine. Yeah, and mm. really the whole, like, especially at the very end, the whole thing's so visually stunning mm -hmm. that it's definitely, like, there's no way somebody in text chat can ruin that for you. Yeah. So there's definitely a lot that happens right at the end, especially, that just had my mind blown. Um, okay. So, and, and it's something that, like, they didn't spoil for you. Okay, so, well, that's good. There's still some more that I don't know. Yeah, I mean, it's more subtle things, so as long as you're just, sure. like, paying attention, it's no, like, big twist. It's just the overall vibe of everything at the end. Mm -hmm. I think you're really going to appreciate it, especially if you just, like, take time to, like, look at your surroundings, really. Yep. Um, it's all real cool. There's, I, I do recommend to anybody going through the main story, especially at the end, to just take time to kind of wander a bit. Okay. Um, through where you're journeying through, because there are some really cool things to see. Cool. And I'll, yeah, like I said, I, I'll definitely still cast. play it. Right. I, I mean, I'll definitely still play it. It's just that, you know, something like that happens. It's like, okay, hmm. cool. I'll just come back to that later because it's amazing how many stories you forget if you put enough time between you anyways. So right. some of those nuances I might also just forget by the time I get around to it. So it's like, that's, that's, that's fine. Um, so I'm not getting sleep tonight. <laughs> <laughs> what I'm doing... <laughs> <laughs> Turn off zone chat. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it's recommended um, anyway, unless you're looking for Harrow Storm spawns. Yeah, which is mm -hmm. uh, Harrow Storm spawns and selling uh, mats is why I keep zone chat up all the time. And yeah, that uh, backfired a little on this one. Uh, <laughs> but the only other thing worth mentioning, because we all, uh, well, we almost all have a kinds Aegis uh, story is I ran through Kynes Aegis on normal, and it was a lot of fun. Um, we did that blind just because a lot of people wanted to do it, and it was varying difficulties. So we just ran through just to see what it was. It was great. Um, seems like a really fun trial. I love the aesthetics. Uh, the fact that all the sea giants are basically just Scandinavian death metal vocalists is pretty entertaining mm -hmm. as well. Because their voices are ridiculously deep. Um, what was I going to say? But uh, our vet run did not go so hot. Um, we did well, and we got the mechanics down very quickly, even though for our vet run, I believe four of us knew what we were doing from normal or reading about it, and then the other eight were blind. We went through, uh, took a little getting used to. We got through first boss, got second boss up to deep execute. I believe he was down to like, I want to say three million hit points. Like he was, he was on his deathbed, uh, and we were, we were kind of surprised by the multiple versions of the ghost show up without going too much into it, like his doppelgangers. And it, we were having trouble with some of the timing of it. So we kind of just crapped out at the very end. We we're like, okay, we got this in the next try. Like, that's all. I just need to change what I'm going to do to uh, make my stamina last longer. And instead, um, we had seven people disconnect. Oof. And they needed to come back. And then we lost sound, just like Pixie. <laughs> where all we could hear was sword clanks. We didn't even get footsteps. We got sword clanks. <laughs> and weirdly enough, we got like every ninth word the boss would say, and that was it. <laughs> so it would just be silence, 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 silence. Summon, and then nothing again. And it was like, what the, what is happening? So like, <laughs> and it would not be the same words. It would just be an arbitrary out of context word, even sometimes where it would be funny, where he would just yell like, and or something and it's like, what, is, <laughs> what is happening <laughs> so it was very awkward um and then while 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 we were trying to basically figure out what was happening with that and the people DCing and coming back then people started having the you've been in the trial too long and the memory leak problem because that good frame rate i was telling you about people just started hemorrhaging frames where it was like, okay, this is a flip book. Now I can't even like figure out what to do. 
And then as we're trying to go through it, we figured we'd make the best of it, even though we didn't have sound. We'd see how well we did. We'd do a couple more pulls. We got a couple of very inconvenient pike drops where it was like way up on the ballista. Um, oh. We're trying to get people up there before they died when you don't get shout outs. So people constantly have to be looking around to try to find them is, is rough. Um, we had the boss do a dragon knight chain and pull the person off the boat back to us once, which insta gibbed him, which was a little peculiar as well. Um, it, it got weird <laughs> to say the least. I love that fight, uh, with the ballistas. We've made references to that Eldmary Dominion fight or quest where you like have the boat fight. Really like how they brought that into a trial. That's super different mechanics. People always give them crap when it's like, oh, you just recycled mechanics. That fight mm -hmm. is super unique. Like, really, really unique, and I like it a lot. Uh, but that's what we had to call it because it just became unplayable at that point. We're going to go back in. Uh, I'm curious how the final fight, which is, again, I think very unique. Curious how that'll go when we try to do it on VET as opposed to normal, but... Yeah, that that unfortunately that last note was kind of a for me where it, it the game killed us more than the trial killed us in the end for that one, which is kind of weak. Yeah, I mean, so far in Greymore, my uh, tr like dungeon and trial bug slash frame rate. Well, frame rates are are disaster in trials because 12 people casting spells um <laughs> yes it's, it's not frames per second anymore it's kind of like frames per minute at that point <laughs> someone in chat pointed out i don't know who it was yep. um, but yeah that was that's dude so have you haven't seen the final boss then, right? N on I Western. have. I saw. Yeah, I burnt through it on normal just to see what was happening um, with those people who wanted to see it. It was kind of just like helping them. I was indifferent mm -hmm. to doing it or not doing it. Uh, we went through with them. I have seen the final boss. The final boss is very interesting. Um, I the only thing I know about the final boss uh, on normal is you cannot bypass every single mechanic he has with. Uh, a level of burn. We got him down to half a percent of health without doing any single mechanic. <laughs> wow. Okay. <laughs> At, on normal. And his, like, I guess, like, his radiation tick will just be the description I give it without ruining anything. His radiation tick was, like, ticking the party for, like, 35k. So it's just without overshields, <laughs> everybody's just getting one shot. I mean, I wish that was kind of the veteran the, the veteran was difficult so uh, after uh, yeah yeah i would imagine <laughs> <laughs> so after going in blind last week and not going over the 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 boat boss the second boss uh mm -hmm. well not last week the week before the basically the launch week um so we went back in there again with the lore seekers pceu led by Luna Spear, and she was ready this time. She actually, uh, like, looked it up, uh, find out what the mechanics are and things like that. Um, so we went in there, we knew what to do, we got through all the bosses. The, uh, the trash pulls are more difficult than all the bosses, especially the trash pull right before the final boss. We just had to oh my God. do it. I know what you're talking about. We just kept dying. Basically, <laughs> I think we wiped 20 times or something like that until we were actually at the boss and through the trash pools because they hit harder than anything in the, in the game. Those blood knights the, are outrageous. The blood knights and then you have the, uh, like... There is so many as the tide breakers, the shamans, and then you have the the uh, infusers. The yeah, the oh infusers. Oh my god, yeah. the infusers! It's like oh, I just infused the blood knight, which is already basically a one shot mechanic. It's like what is happening? <laughs> we, so we tried doing it normally, and then we realized it just doesn't gonna work. So what we just started doing was we would pull, 
everyone was focused on one thing. Like, okay, we are killing this infuser, this wipe. We would kill that infuser. Maybe a one or two extra things. We would wipe, restart, kill one more ad, die, restart, kill one more ad, die, restart. And eventually we <laughs> managed to clear God knows how many ads there are. Um, and then the final boss is... That's an endurance fight. We didn't it's clear so much it. Health. it <laughs> yes. How, how much is it? It's like 130 on just veteran? Not, uh, no, more. I no, did. 200, uh, I think. Yeah, something like it, that. It's 236, I think, on vet and like 258 on vet hard mode, I think it is. Yeah. Something it like is, that. It, it is it's nonsense now. health. <laughs> yeah. So we started the fight. Um,. It's actually as as the main so I was doing the main tanking. It is not super deadly. It took me a while to figure out the mechanics and survive. But once I did, it's not too bad. Like it they you can just block through everything he throws at you. Mm -hmm. But the fight is so long. Yeah. Uh, it, the attention span required for that fight is like I don't know, I guess 20, 25 minutes or something like that. And then once, like, you get all the pattern, there's this lightning phase where you have to run to the walls and form a line, otherwise everybody gets wiped, and then you start changing. There's, like, a portal mechanic, but instead of a portal, it's a staircase. You The arena breaks and you fall down to a different <laughs> arena. There's these whole bunch of mechanics... Um, I don't know how, like, what percentage we got it down to. Uh, I think we s initiated the second phase once, and that was it. And then we were like, okay, well, this is... Well, it, it was in the middle of the night. It was like 2 a.m., 3 a.m., something like that. Um, so we stopped and decided to do it some other time. Now, this week's trial was Veteran Halra Citadel hard mode so i've got my first trial hard mode clear but no thanks to me the final boss of hellra citadel on hard mode wiped the floor with my face <laughs> what is that 18k full mitigation 18k light attacks what is that I just got wiped. So, I was doing the main tanking, right? I would pull the boss. Everything is fine. He starts doing his light attack weave. Uh, so, he does four light attack weaves, then some like a heavy attack, and then another four light attack weaves, and then throw the shield, which we aim at the gargoyles. At least that's the plan. See, I get through the first weave. I am perma-blocking. I get through the first weave, I'm dropping damage shields, I, I'm also getting healed at the same time. And then the heavy attack of the boss doesn't do anything, it's like 1% damage. And then I die, because the second light attack weave starts, it's 18k per head. He hits me for like 17k, uh, 70k, while I'm blocking. And so I'm trying to cast damage shields and everything, and I die. Uh, has he was our second tank. Uh, he takes over. Someone reses me. I get up. I taunt the boss. He just kills me again. <laughs> Someone reses me. I get up. I taunt the boss. He just kills me again. <laughs> Every single. I I think I only managed to tank him for like ten percent of his health at a single time. He just kept. <laughs> killing me it was insane i was i did i was like wait am i not blocking so i tried not <laughs> blocking once and he apparently when when you don't block it's six it's like 60k per hit <laughs> so i was like okay i am blocking because i'm looking at my death recap and it's like 18k 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 i'm dead and yep. i was like trying to cast my damage shields and things like that <laughs> i just kept dying it was I felt so bad. I mean, we did like veteran kinds. Of the, it. Yeah. I, I assume the the thing that was obliterating you 
with thousand cuts. Yes. 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 Yeah. That that was, light attack beat say, like one, two, three, four. It and it's so. it's not. <laughs> everyone's first experience with that is. Okay, I'm just gonna. Oh my God! Uh -huh. What just hit me? <laughs> like, yeah, mm. thousand cuts is an unpleasant beast if you don't know what's uh, what's coming at you. But I see. Esti says sometimes you're gonna roll. I can't roll because I have to keep the boss specifically in that position. So he throws his shields and destroys the gargoyles. If I roll, he just moves out of the position. So I was trying to block it. There is nothing in the game so far that hit me that hard. <laughs> like, none of the dungeon hard mode bosses wipe the floor like that with my face. And, like, <laughs> veteran Kain Zegas, final boss, it's fine. I was able to tank it. Every now and then, like, usually when I die, it's because I miss a block. I either weapon swap at the wrong time, and there's, like, that... 0.5 seconds delay between your block going back up after a weapon swap and like I get hit by a heavy attack I die it's fine this wasn't the case I was perma blocking throughout the entire thing and every 10 seconds I was dying so um eventually we're like okay let let's I'll just stay back and let Has do the tanking and he tanked it like a champ I don't think he died once other than like getting petrified or someone breaking the petrification and nuking him. I don't think he died once and I was watching him like at some point I just stopped doing anything because there weren't any ads either. I was looking at him and it's like he's blocking it just fine. And then he died at some point for due to petrification or something. I taunted the boss again and bam I'm dead again. I was like come on. So yeah that was. <laughs> he just doesn't like you specifically. I don't know it was so rough. I mean, basically, I got my first Hellrestedil hard mode clear, but all I did throughout <laughs> the, it, the final fight, when we did clear it, was just stay behind the boss and watch Has tank it, basically. And when there were ads, I would just taunt them, and then I would get petrified, and when I'm petrified, I don't take any damage at all. So I'm standing in the middle of, like, 20 ads, hitting me while I'm stoned, and it's like, okay, <laughs> let's just nuke it down, I guess. Yeah. Yeah, that, so, that, that yeah. fight is very much a shock test to tanks the first time. <laughs> so that's why when you were explaining that, I was like, ah, yes, I remember the first time that it was I just like, oh, wow, that's a lot of damage really fast. <laughs> the thing is, I don't know what I'm supposed to... I, I, I was at 33k resistances, right? Mm -hmm. I had the... Um, the defensive stance slotted, so my block mitigation is increased by 10%. Yep. I'm at 45k health. I am casting igneous shields and defensive stance. And I was still dying. <laughs> what What more can I do? So, what... Um, it, 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 it was um, kind of mentioned in chat. So, you don't need to sit there. I mean, you can physically build yourself to sit there... Magma Shell is great when you have that ultimate because then you can horrify people who are new to the trial and <laughs> don't know how to do it because you can just sit there and just put your block down and just like flex at the boss while it hits you for 3% <laughs> damage. But if you don't have your ultimate, you can't do that. Yeah. Um, the boss doesn't move when he does 1,000 cuts. He's stationary. So block your way back out of it. So you just walk away until he <laughs> finishes his weave and then you walk back to him. Yeah, you you kind of gotta such... just soak. You gotta soak a couple of them while you get out of it, and then as long as you can soak a couple of them, then I you can... go back in. Oh come on! That is. Just... <laughs> Why did no one tell me this while I was getting wrecked left and right for thirty minutes straight? <laughs> because that's not nearly as fun. Yeah, it's. I was. He doesn't move when he's doing a thousand cuts. <laughs> I was petrified because every five seconds he would just nuke me. And Kudos nothing for in trying the... to soak all 1,000 cuts. <laughs> Dude, I was trying. I was like doing damage shields and I was like, I was using everything. And with my damage shields, I go up to like 75k health, right? I, I add 37k. No, no I, I go up to like 82k health or something like that. And that's how I survive it, if I can. 
cast my damage shields in time. And then he starts a second thousand cuts and I would die. I was like, I was so embarrassed throughout the entire thing. Because I was like, I got the boss, I'm dead. Uh, the, those two <laughs> sentences came back to back throughout the entire fight. I was like, okay, I got <laughs> Has even at some point thought that I was... I didn't have, because I would get up and I would pull the boss away from Haas because he was off tanking, which was didn't turn out to be the case. Um, and he was like, <laughs> okay, it's fine, regenerate resources before you taunt the boss again. And I was like, the re resources is not the problem. I'm at full resources. He's still wiping the floor with my face. It's <laughs> That's yeah, not the no, issue. You yeah okay now i know what to do the, at least yeah soak the damage till you can get out uh it was also mentioned i i tend to walk back while i'm doing it uh but yeah you can it, 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 you can dodge roll out too uh but yeah you, you soak it to start until he's stationary then go back that's i just that's assumed how you always... would move out of the way and like no. get out of the position for the gargoyle <laughs> so i just stood there put my block up and died goodness me <laughs> Ah. Okay. So yeah, now I know what to do. If we ever go back there, I know I know I can clear it. Hopefully, <laughs> we'll see. Anyway, um, so I. Right. So um, we started a new initiative. So the the trial lead here is is Luna Spear, and uh, we also started a dungeon group with Luna, uh, joined by Kitsune and Jen, and. Um, we decided to do hard mode dungeons, hard mode DLC dungeons, and clear all of them, basically. We are calling ourselves the Untaunted, <laughs> uh, which people at first remarked uh, that it was funny, but I lost the taunt so many times on Moongrave Fane final <laughs> boss, it was like, Haha, joke's on you, we are the Untaunted, or the boss is Untaunted, because I'm not taunting anything. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, so first time we went in there, it was last week, uh, and it we got it down to like 40%, and every time we would get it down to 40%, the ghosts would spawn, 40, 45, sometimes there, the ghosts would spawn, uh, the minute the fake boss would spawn, the boss is there, and we are not yet fully like coordinated, so I'm trying, to, like, every single time I lost the town at some point to the boss and he would just nuke someone, either Luna, Kitsune, or Jen, and then it goes to, to chaos after that. Now, my, my main problem in that dungeon was the entire thing is dark, okay? There, there are minimal lighting. Everything is red. Everything is semi-transparent. I don't see anything. It's like the boss is black and red. My character is transparent because I'm using green dragon blood. The ghosts are transparent because they're transparent because they're ghosts, I guess. I don't know. And then they have the <laughs> shield around them, which is also semi-transparent and red on black. And the ground is red on black. And then there's fire. And then there's this red on black AoEs happening. So when you look at it, it's just multiple objects and AOEs and everything in a single frame, all semi-transparent, all the same color. So I'm like, I know when the ghosts spawn, the problem is I don't see them. So here I am, just I just taunt the boss and then I start looking for the ghosts that are chasing our DPS or the healer and I'm like, trying to see, you know, running around, sprinting, looking behind the boxes, looking at the things, trying to aim them and see them. And while I'm trying to see what is happening, I forget the boss and he just runs off and nukes someone, obviously. So... That was difficult, so that week we didn't finish it, but... This week, we returned there. We started the fight, hard mode, and we got it down to 10%. And I ran out of resources and got one shot and then I died. Ten mm. percent. And after that, we were like, okay, yeah, we got it down to ten percent at the first try. Uh, we got this. Three hours later, Famous we never, words. yeah, we never <laughs> got it down any less than forty percent for the next three hours after that. Though. Oh God! Oh no! 
it just didn't a lot like things just didn't work out uh eventually i decided to use the roll set even though the traits weren't perfect uh like i have an Im infused sabatons for example i decided to use the new heavy set from kind's agus which gives major agus to everyone for 10 seconds every 30 36 seconds when you heavy attack i was like okay let's give it a shot it made so much difference lotus you deserve really? it increases the survivability it, it, it's insane for 10 seconds hmm. everyone takes 30 percent less damage from anything inside the, the trial or the dungeon and that yeah, so, 10 seconds hmm. is enough to like regenerate resources for you and the healer because people aren't taking as much damage i actually asked hmm. luna like i said well was it different after i switched to you know to to roll and apparently it was so from now on i am going probably going to be using that set quite a lot whenever i'm going full defense so i was doing plague doctor and roll Okay. Um, you are still at cap resistance, and you are still at like 45k health, so it worked pretty nicely. And then Kitsune said, okay, last try, because it was almost 1am, and, um, and we're like, okay, we killed it. <laughs> we, killed, we killed the nice. boss at the nice. last try. And Perfect. You know, once we got it down to, like, execute, we were all hype and everything like that, and I got chained, and my chain location ended up being exactly where the Sanguine Sacrifice is. So I went there, because you have to move where your chain thing is, otherwise you take damage and die. And a thing popped, like, the boss was at 5%, and a synergy popped up, and I just used it because why not resources, right? I just killed myself on the spot <laughs> because of the sanguine <laughs> sacrifice. And I looked up and I saw that the boss is at like 4% or something like that. And I panicked. I was like, nuke the boss. No, res me. No, nuke the boss. Do something. <laughs> and um, Jen started kiting the mini boss. Kitsune started kiting the, the actual boss. And to our luck, the actual boss did its like teleport behind the box and Luna rezzed me, we nuked it down, we got drunk on power and I was like, yes! <laughs> <laughs> so two days, four hours, well, three, four hours run each. Um, wow, and, and nice. We, yeah, and we got the Moongray Fane hard mode. Very nice. I actually have never done that hard mode. That's one of the either. three Chaos. dungeons I have not done. I haven't done Moongrave. I haven't done Frost Vault. And there's some other one that I'm forgetting. Oh, Marsalock. I've tried Marsalock. Mm. I actually have never even tried uh, Moongrave or Frost Vault. I've just never had a group that did them. I, we've done them on VET or whatever, but it's never been like, a, oh, let's do those on hard mode. So that's that's interesting because that sounds intense. <laughs> it was. Chaos. It was. Yeah. Absolute and um, so Kiz reminded me in chat. So Jen, one of our DPS, was looking for the Hollow Fang ring. Apparently that never dropped. And she was going crazy for because it wasn't dropping at all. And at the final boss, when we killed him, when we cleared it, I also got the ring as well. So we were like, yes, wait, I got the ring as well. Yes. So it was, it was, it was a lot. Like my face went numb due to the adrenaline <laughs> rush. I was like, you know, the intensity and then the sudden relaxation. And I was like, oh God, I'm so... <laughs> um, but yeah, so we will probably be doing two dungeon run two days a week of these untaunted dungeon runs one is um today when we when we have tales of tomriel it's on saturday 7 p.m gmt that's like true that's 3 p.m est i believe uh it's gonna be live streamed and we are gonna be doing one more during weekdays, probably Tuesday or Wednesday, we haven't decided yet, but... Uh, so 7pm GMT SD. That would be... 
I think it's 2 p.m. Eastern. No. Because of so it's 10, 10 p.m. my time. You guys are seven hour behind me. So it's 3 p.m. 3 p.m. Oh. And British summer time is two hour behind me. So it's 8 p.m. British summer time, 7 p.m. GMT, uh, 9 p.m. Central European summer time, and 3 p.m. EST. Pick whichever you want. Yeah, I'm time zones are drag and break, and this is all awful. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, yeah, we are going to be... I don't know which which weekday and what time it'll be, but, yeah. So, what else? The thing I was doing, other than that... have you re Did you realize how I had absolutely no Greymore-related tales for two weeks? Even though Greymore has been out for two, three weeks. <laughs> the reason for that is... I made a new outfit style. I, I mean, I, I put together a new outfit, okay? It looks nice. I utilized the new Swartain outfit because I paid for the Digital Collector's Edition for the Swartain outfit, and then I kind of regretted it because it wasn't as good as it looks in the cinematic trailers because they are cinematic trailers. So I thought, okay, I'm gonna use this. So I put together an outfit. The only thing that is missing from the outfit is the Horned Dragon Shield. It only drops from Battlegrounds, it cannot be traded. The Horned Dragon Shield. It's not the best looking shield in the game. It's not the greatest shield in the game. It doesn't have any stats, it's just a cosmetic thing, okay? But that specific shield will go the best with the current costume I have. And the current outfit I made isn't even my favorite outfit I made in the game. But <laughs> I made it. It has to be completed. Before I can move on. With anything in the game. With Greymore. With the storyline. I've been doing Battlegrounds every day for the last three weeks. On four characters. Not just the daily random Battleground. Like, I get that on all four characters, and then I hop into my Warden, which is currently my best PV, best Battleground character, and I just keep doing Battlegrounds for the rewards of the Worthy or whatever the boxes are. I've gotten every other shield. I've gotten chest pieces, arm pieces. I got 80-90% of all of the rest of the motifs that can drop from Battlegrounds. Not... The shield. Why would an RNG on a cosmetic item would be this low? Okay? It's it it's not it's not fair. It's I'm okay with the struggle bus of it all. Okay. I'm okay with throwing myself at trials and dungeons on hard mode on days on end, but doing battlegrounds for three weeks straight is not right it shouldn't <laughs> happen and we should be given at least an option to i don't know if you have done a hundred battlegrounds pick one of the motifs that you want or i don't know you have just farmed several million alliance points because you've been doing non-stop battlegrounds maybe you deserve to be able to buy the motif page Instead of doing more and more and more battlegrounds. And here's the problem. Here's the problem. The the drops, the drop pool doesn't change. <laughs> so even if I got every other motif that drops from battlegrounds, there is a chance I will still not get the shield. It will still not drop. Because what happens is you can get, I don't know, horned dragon chest piece multiple times what happens is once you get it and if you get it again if it's a duplicate it just doesn't show up it just doesn't show up in your reward box that's it so i could run battlegrounds for eternity until zenimax online decides that okay we are closing down elder scrolls online in like how many years later <laughs> it is possible i still won't have that shield 
Why? Give me an option to, I don't know, after I've suffered enough, I should be able... And I don't even... Battlegrounds suck. Okay. <laughs> this made me real. So every now and then I would go into Battlegrounds, I would play for a while. But doing them every single day, back to back, oh. for three weeks, made me realize the PvP in this game, especially Battlegrounds, is actually not fun it's ridiculous it's the system is annoying because all all that is happening is people are just jumping like bunnies and kiting and everybody is twitching like left and right left and right left and right or running around a a pillar what are we doing are we playing dota again what is this what is this <laughs> kiting the only builds that makes sort of sense is the nuke builds because if you don't nuke someone fast enough, they either go invisible, or bolt escape, or start running around the pillar, so you can't target <laughs> them, so your skills can't connect. And it's just that, this is the experience. I have come to realize that I absolutely despise the PvP of Elder Scrolls Online. <laughs> because there are no cooldowns, everything is spammable, people are just moving around constantly. Like, everybody is, is given 7 liters of coffee mixed with energy drinks. And some moon sugar. There is no structure. What is this? So, yeah. Screw Battlegrounds. I think I have an answer for you. Yeah. This is an in-depth look at Zahn the Scalecaller's backstory and why she's so obsessed with her shield. Mm -hmm. Why she loves Spellbreaker and why no. no one is allowed to touch it. I mean, <laughs> yeah. if, if I got my shield, I would probably yell if someone touches my shield <laughs> as well. But I don't. So, I don't have my. Sh I don't even have the shield. It doesn't drop. That um, well constructed rant proves exactly how okay you are with this scenario. <laughs> <laughs> I, yeah, he started this whole thing with, I'm okay with this, but... <laughs> and then 20 minute rant. <laughs> then totally arc broke. Okay with this. <laughs> I just want my shield, guys. <laughs> My this, shield. however, it, 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 my God, shield. I, can just, I can just hear the voice too. <laughs> it, um, it, this is also the reason that I uh, don't care for RNG because no matter how many battlegrounds you win or lose or come in that awkward second place where <laughs> you're just playing not to lose, usually. Mm. Um, None. Of, you could come in first on your team. You could come in last on your team. First in the match, last in the match. None of that matters. It's all a coin flip. So and there's no actual skill involved with what you're doing, which is why I just have a fundamental problem with RNG. I'm just like, yes, yeah, it's a party game, so it is what it is. But it's just like not not so. I no one will ever convince me that RNG is a. a good concept for things. Like, I will understand it in this sense. So, if you don't do RNG, if I could pick my reward right out of the bat, I would do one battleground and I would pick the shield because I don't care about any of the rest right. of one the One shield, please. Done. Yes. So, that that reduces the gameplay time significantly. Like you want sure. people to continue playing the game, right? Even if right. it makes them suffer. Um... <laughs> The thing is, the problem with the Battlegrounds motif RNG system is that the items you get doesn't get drawn out, like get pulled out of the item pool, the reward pool. Right. Your so your RNG to get the shield <laughs> never increases. Yeah. It's always the same. If it was 0.00001%, which I assume now, it's it will always be 0.00001%. Even after you got all the other things. Which means mm -hmm. it could be forever. What you yes. could do is... Yes, every individual item could have 0.1% chance. And then once you get one, every item now has 
11 chance or 0 0.0101 chance, whatever. It keeps increasing, keeps increasing. And by the time you got every other item, your chance to get the shield is now like 20%, you know? Ah, <sighs> Zas, please, <laughs> if anybody listens to this, e like, mail, give me a rede redeem code for that shield or something, I don't know. Zas, Zan, either Z of you. <laughs> either one. <laughs> give me the shield. <laughs> or just fix the RNG system. So the next three weeks of Battlegrounds that I do, I actually get it. I don't know. You only get shields? You, ju you just can't that's... get it. That's all you ever get? You're just <laughs> bludgeoned with infinite shields? <laughs> I can't I can't go back to doing story and stuff until I fin complete my outfit. It's the, just... They yeah. come in an order, okay? You do the outfit, you finish the outfit, and then you do everything else. I mean, hiking Scott, Scott, however you say his name, Scavrin? Argrim? Scavrin? Argrim? Yeah. Argrim. Him, he probably wouldn't even talk to you without that shield. It'd See, just be like, exactly. Get this peasant yeah. out of my courtroom. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'm currently using a barbarian shield and Lyris Titanborn shield, which has nothing to do with the outfit I have. It doesn't make mm -hmm. sense. Oh. oh. This How is, long have I been ranting for? I, I, me. For a while. I, yeah, a you, you, yeah, you. That that broke you, man. <laughs> when I started my tales, we were at one hour, <laughs> yeah, and I was yeah, like, yeah. "Oh, nice! I can go to sleep by nope. basically doing my tales very quickly." Woke up we are rage. at hour forty-five minutes. <laughs> yep. <laughs> um, since you do have the uh, collector's edition uh, digital. I believe you get this too, because uh, I got the physical collector's edition or whatever. I think we all got the thing with the emote packs. Mm -hmm. If you haven't, for anybody that like hasn't looked at this, if you got the emote pack, which I'm pretty sure that's how that works. Actually, no, it is because some of the people I know have it. Look at the arrow to the knee emote if you have not already, <laughs> um, because it is my favorite new emote. Mm -hmm. It's obviously a Skyrim joke, but it changes based on which voice you have as well. Oh. Um, because you just arbitrarily get shot with an arrow in the knee <laughs> <laughs> out of nowhere, and your character lets out the most blood-curdling scream from some of the characters. <laughs> like, mine actually just makes, like, an unpleasant grunt and <laughs> yells a little bit. And, uh, yeah, a couple other people, as we've seen, have done it sounds like they're being slowly lowered into like a fan or something. It's just like, why, why is this person screaming so much from an arrow in their knee? So I love that with the arrow in the knee emote, at least my tune, like she gets shot in her knee and she reacts appropriately at first and then it just becomes more annoyance than anything else. She's like, <laughs> again? And it's she, it's like a, an almost visual eye roll, and it's just hysterical <laughs> to me that she seems less in pain and more inconvenienced Annoyed. by the air. <laughs> yeah, it's like really, this is the third time this week that you did this emo. <laughs> what is wrong with you? Uh, so yeah, that's the end of my tales. Yeah, <laughs> is it? Next week probably will be more Battleground ranting, because... Mm -hmm. <sighs> oh, wait, probably not, because I return to office on Monday. Our work-from-home days are over. So... I probably won't be playing as much. Uh, so what I was doing is I was play doing my Battlegrounds in the morning. Um, so now I will be actually in the office, or going to the office in the morning, so I don't know. Uh, hopefully it won't throw my schedules too far off going back to the office, but I'll do my best yeah. to keep it on track, you know, and we'll see. But yeah, that's it from me. Yeah, plenty more shields to not be got by next show. <laughs> <laughs> if you don't have the shield by next show, I don't know whether to laugh or cry for you, to be honest. I know, I'm going to start feeling bad. <laughs> <laughs> I'm almost there. Like, I've been laughing this whole time. Part of me feels a little bit bad. I think next time I'm going to feel a lot bad. <laughs> <laughs> so please get your shields so I don't have to feel like a horrible person for continuously laughing at you. 
Uh, so, I don't know. Uh, slowly we'll move away from being a family friendly show if I don't get that shield. <laughs> <laughs> gonna earn an explicit tag. Yeah, yeah. So, all right, Lotus. Final thoughts. Where can people find you? Um, things like that. Yeah, final thoughts. Hopefully, um, the weirdnesses we get from launch kind of iron themselves out, but things are pretty good, and hopefully everybody's enjoying Greymore. Um, uh, you can find me at Lotus of Doom pretty much everywhere, whether it's in-game, whether it's on Twitch or Twitter or Discord or any of that stuff. So if you ever need anything, uh, feel free to hit me up there. All right, Pixie. Well, you can find me over at Twitch at twitch.tv slash hyperpixiegaming, and I'm also hyperpixiegaming on Instagram, and I'm hyperpixiegames on Twitter because of character limits. Hmm. And Promethean. Uh, you can find me anywhere that is Promethean99, um, unless it's Twitch, but there's nothing on there, so or nothing yet. Cross my fingers, I can get it working. <laughs> <laughs> That's we'll see. And, well, you can find my own Twitter account, twitter.com slash Arcaneer. You can follow our show on Twitter at twitter.com slash Tales of Tamriel and twitter.com slash Dungeon Crawl Net. Uh, we are also on Instagram that I'm just remembering again that I haven't posted much yet. It's at Tales of Tamriel Podcast. I should really start posting stuff there as well. You can check our Patreon if you want to support us there, patreon.com slash dungeoncrawlernetwork. The financial support is also very, very much appreciated, and it will help keep the uh, keep everything running, as well as increase the quality. You can also support us on Twitch with subscription bits and things like that. Uh, more Patreon tiers are on their way. I'm brainstorming. Also, I am waiting an answer from a certain place that will determine the nature of our patreon tier rewards but they are not <laughs> returning to me yet <laughs> and i don't i i i've been holding this secret for well not secret but sort of like oh, the new thing for dcm for a while it's just yeah i cannot this is turning into it. a tease that we were supposed to be like bringing up like hey cool we have something for you and it's turned into a very extended tease which is not the point of this <laughs> yeah yeah it was supposed to be ready for gray more but yeah. <laughs> for due to things outside of our control it has still not been a thing but you will hear from it once it happens you can also give us a five star review on itunes that also helps, that uh, lets people know that we are a real podcast, that we say words, and sometimes they matter. Or you can tell a friend about us and bring them into this chaotic dumpster fire that we <laughs> host here. We will see you all next time. Thank you all so very much for joining, and have a great night. Bye, everybody. Bye, guys.
is heard to shout Red diamond, red diamond The heart and soul of men Red diamond, red diamond Protect us till the end The laughing heart sprayed blood afar A gout on seer it fell And like a dart shot to its mark Down in an alien well Magic effused the lork in blood To crystal red and strong Then wild elves cut and polished it down To chimel at a ball Red diamond, red diamond The heart and soul of men Red diamond, red diamond Protect us till the end When elves lost learned to men Akatosh gave the stone to Saint Alesh in token of her right to sit the throne Red diamond, red diamond, the heart and soul of men Red diamond, red diamond, protect us till the end Red diamond, red diamond, protect us till the end